last time we beat the old ginseng and uh, another frog boss. And now we're just continuing. Whoa, what are you? What are you? trying to attack me.
spirit of Captain Void illusion. The what? Explore its potential elsewhere. Uh, this is where I started the episode. Oh no! Okay, well, at least I'm pretty close by. I should have healed. Why didn't I heal? I was. Well, 
Okay, so I was I was looking at my mana, and I was like, I don't have a, enough mana to, to do anything. And then I thought to myself, uh, man, sure wish I could accomplish anything. I don't know. Ah. This feels like a boss.
does that sound? We have this way we could go. We have up to the side there as well. Oh my gosh, this place. Come on. Oh, hey. Well, now we can upgrade our gourd. Hmm. 
another one of you. Considerably increases defense, deals damage to surrounding enemies upon taking hits. Okay. Well, hmm. I guess that's this direction taken care of.
there any I don't know that there's any reason for me to do that. I think I pretty much just... Yeah, I went that way. Let's, uh... Before we keep going, we have two vines, which means we can go upgrade our gourd. Drops, honey brew. I drink. Fight, fight, but not without a gourd that suits just right. Uh. There's no going back to the court. No idea what that is. Captain Culpa wave. Oh 
my gosh. Been getting a lot of these spirits lately. I mean, these non cultivatable spirits. Maybe they're like next level spirits that we can't cultivate until later in the story. Okay, we're here at Thunderclap Temple. This, I think, is where One of us to go. Okay, well, 
This seems like a good place to leave off. So let's read the journal entries. Dark-faced overlord. The Grand Hall was filled with pious devotees attending the ceremony. This was the fourth ceremony organized by Yellowbrow for his mortal believers. A devotee had attended three times, witnessing numerous miracles on each occasion. However, it was the first time for his acquaintance from, the home, from their hometown to attend such a ceremony, and the acquaintance harbored deep suspicions. Before long, two blind monks carried in a statue of a wrathful Vajra. The devotee introduced it to his acquaintance, saying, This Vajra can discern a person's goodness or evil. As they finished speaking, two men approached the statue, accusing each other over some grievances. In no time, they were reduced to ashes by the Vajra. The acquaintance was shocked by the abruptness of it all. Just then, he heard heavy footsteps outside the hall. Looking out through the window, he saw a giant with blue skin draped in a golden spiked robe walking slowly towards them. The devotee introduced again. This guardian can judge a person's sincerity. After saying this, the monk led the crowd to present their offerings to the guardian one by one. He reminded, make sure to give away all your money. The acquaintance, de the, the acquaintance deeply distrustful of the devotee's words, said, you've been deceived by them. These monks are all frauds. The devotee retorted angrily, How can you speak so recklessly? Why would I deceive you, being from the same hometown? Who knows if you're in cahoots with them? Their argument grew louder and louder. The Vajra, seeing their quarrel, raised its steel fork and charged at them. The acquaintance quickly fled, but the devotee shouted, Don't be afraid, I will prove my sincerity. The Vajra showed no hesitance. Just when the acquaintance thought his fellow townsman was doomed, the blue-skinned giant raised his hand to block the Vajra, saving the devotee's life. From then on, the acquaintance became a regular at the ceremonies, always making sure to give away all his money before leaving, just like his fellow townsman. Lovely. Turtle Treasure. Years ago, in village of Chen... A villager went out one day and saw a peculiar man standing by the roadside, holding a rope tied to a white, sof white soft-shelled turtle. Passers-by came and went, but no one paid any attention to the strange sight. The villagers, oh, the villager pretended not to notice and tried to hurry past, but the white turtle at his feet let out a pitiful cry. In his compassion, he argued with the peculiar man and eventually brought the white turtle, releasing it back into the water. That night, the villager had a dream in which the white turtle vomited out a tiny person with blue-purple skin and an ugly face. The tiny person ran towards the villager, startling him awake. After that, the villager began to change. His eyes could see occasional glimmers of light in the mountains and fields, and his appetite grew immensely along with his strength. One day, he took a shovel and dug into the ground, discovering a coffin filled with valuable artifacts. This unexpected... Uh, what? This unexpected found bestowed his great wealth. What? What? Maybe this unexpected find bestowed him great wealth. I don't know. One night, the white turtle appeared in his dream again, letting out a cry. The villager felt his stomach churn and vomited out the tiny person with blue-purple skin. The tiny person fell to the ground and hurried toward the white turtle. Realizing something, the villager grabbed the tiny person and swallowed him back down. The white turtle called out a few more times, but the villager covered his mouth, refusing to let the tiny person out. After a tense standoff, the villager woke up again. Over time, the villager's appearance became increasingly abnormal, forcing him to wear an iron mask to hide his face. Eventually, even his skin turned blue-purple and he fled into the mountains, carrying specially made tools to search for more treasures. Interestingly, on his treasure hunting journey, he discovered that, there was not, that he was not the only one with such an experience. 
which brought him some comfort. Captain Kelpa Wave. Thought yourself mighty, yet ended up headless. From your blood and pus, lotus flowers bloom uh, restless. Coaxed, enticed, and stabbed by the words of auspiciousness, your link to Buddha's wisdom severed, your mind lost in the incense dust, breathless. The truest of the truth, the kindest in, ki the kindest in kindness and in fairest in, in fairness. You sought and lost, principle shattered, head twisted, body crossed, tenderness forsaken you, your upright exhaust, uprights exhaust, eyes clouded, stars dimmed and frost. May your body bring prosperity, and the red lotus thrives in hostility. Okay. Captain Void Illusion. Yeah, that's... I just found. With the arrogance ablaze, his limbs torn, you boasted of truth a thousand hands adorned. Yet the void illusion deceived, beguiled, mourned and lamented, your spirit defiled. With bonds severed, in nirvana you were exiled. In silence and solitude and tranquility, how painful it was to face death and clarity. Detached from bitterness and pain, blessed your flesh and blood through resentment shall remain. May you cease the debate of falsehood and truth as the tide rises, cleansing with mighty sooth. Okay. Well. If that's not a boss down there, I don't know. Um. So, yeah. We're gonna... Let's just craft this. Oh. Well, that's fun. For some reason, I just assumed that I could go... Okay. Well, that's uh, interesting. We're gonna... Stop doing that. Wow, I had like 55,000. And now I have 33,000. Which is still a lot, but my goodness. That's embarrassing, is what it is. Let's do that. And that. And that. More critical hit chance, sure. All right. Yep, this is gonna do it. Um, that's really embarrassing. I, d I didn't realize that I was spending all of that. I was like, I already have it. I already got it. So I'm not gonna be spending all of these resources I was talking about. Oh, surely I'm not gonna be doing that. But clearly, 
I was, and there is some more significant enemies out there. That's great. All right. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna check that out. We're gonna check that out next time. Um, it's gonna be a bit. I have a bit of a backlog. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.